Thank you for joining the XR Room, which is India's first AR VR focus podcast. And today, I'm delighted and honored to have with me Mr. Ivan Stittler, who's a co-founder, CEO of Expert VR, a e-learning startup based out of Canada. So, Ivan, it's a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Really appreciate you take time. So, start with a basic introduction, right, you know, on you and me, then we can get conversation forward. For sure, yeah. Thank you for having me on the podcast, Eddie. Um, being the co-founder and co-CEO of Expert VR for about five years now, I graduated from university and was starting the business right as I was graduating. And I've been running it for those five years. And we've done a little bit of everything in the virtual reality, augmented reality space over that past five years. Um, but over the past two years, we really focused in on research and e-learning and how we can impact that space in the academic space through virtual reality. Um, and we've done that in, in lots of ways and have lots of plans uh, for the future. But to give some examples um, on the research side of things, we've built environments uh, like the one that Eddie can see behind me right now, um, where we're researching what future ocean life will look like. So we created a dystopian and utopian uh, future of what 2050 ocean life may look like. And then we put over 300 people through these environments and trying to understand how going through a virtual environment uh, affects their empathy towards different laws or policies being put into place around climate change. Um, and then on the e-learning side, we've done all kinds of different things. Why XR? What nudged you to get into XR? Yeah, it all, it all actually started with video for me. I um, started a few YouTube channels when I was younger uh, and just liked editing videos. When I got involved with the business incubator on campus at the university I was going to, Brock University, uh, I met somebody that was also interested in video, but in 360 video. And so I bought a camera in that space and started shooting 360 videos as well as some 180 videos. And that kind of dipped my toes into what uh, virtual reality is. And from there, bought a VR headset and started playing around with it and just playing some VR games and had a lot of fun playing those games, but saw how much impact um, being fully immersed in that world and being able to interact in the way that you can in virtual reality um, can have on education and in other areas and, and saw how that could directly translate into other areas. I mean, I got into uh, VR back in uh, 2015 and uh, the idea was to build a product. So we build uh, a 16 camera rig, uh, a stereoscopic rig. This was in 2016 when Google had built their Odyssey uh, 12 camera array. So we had built yes. a, a 16 camera array and we, we, we added like top bottom and the intention was to take it to the market with the product, but then we realized that we were too early into the market. And I have directly produced India's first stereoscopic VR horror short film called Crackle. But yeah, so I think AR VR is in such a nascent space. What it can do, the impact that it can create, and how transformational it can be is something I try and convey through this podcast. Would you like to start with, you know, talking about the experience that you said you've built about a future dystopian? I mean, what's been the reaction of people, you know, when, when they see that experience? When you're doing a research study at a university and you're recruiting students, it's usually quite difficult to recruit students. So you say, okay, I need at least... 30 to 100, depending on the research study, people to go through this environment or to go through this study. Um, and you're like offering people money and you're doing all kinds of things to try and get them to, to do the research study. And with us, we set up the, the VR environment and we set up the VR headset um, in the middle of the campus. And we were able to get 300 people through, uh, through the research study. So it was a really great experience for the researcher being able to Bring those people in and then the reaction that we got from everyone going through was that they they understood the problem a lot more they enjoyed going through the experience and learning in that way and learning about the the climate change and overfishing problems that we were talking about in, inside the simulation uh, and overall the research showed that people were a lot more empathetic going through the virtual reality environment than they were just reading or watching a video about the same problem um, so the ultimate goal of this, now that that research is being published, is for the researcher to go to the United Nations and use the same simulation to show them 
this is the problem that we're talking about and and hopefully reflect what they've already found in the research and making the United Nations ambassadors um, more empathetic towards the problem as well. So uh, great experience overall. What's the evolution of learning that you're seeing and what's the role of technology and how deeply virtual reality is going to play a role in the future of learning because there's there's so, so because of technology there's, there's so many things around at this point in time you know it's MOOCs which is massive open online courses which are which is uh, available online for free uh, the edtech uh, startups are creating some fantastic things as podcasts webinars uh, you know which is giving you quality education so talk to us about all of these going on in in the space of education versus the traditional education brick and mortar. We've already seen with some schools closing up or going bankrupt that um, in North America, we've seen a, a few big ones over the past year or two. Um, and like, I think we're going to continue to see that for schools that aren't providing the value that students need. But the students that are adopting this new technology, they're putting out um, content like podcasts and like blog posts that people can learn about and draw them into the school. And then they have those masters of of whatever they're teaching and those experts um, at their school and helping create that content. So working with um, companies like ours and all kinds of other companies out there to create the content that students need to learn from, I think we're gonna see um, both in the brick and mortar as well as online in those um, free or um, easy, easily accessible for a fee um, courses online where you go and you learn from an expert and you um, you learn the basics maybe just watching watching some videos or listening to their podcast or their audio or going through slides um, and then they say okay now it's time to go into the virtual reality environment and then you jump in there and you start to put to practice and you you fail, but you fail in a safe environment where you're you're learning from from your failures and you're actually doing the actions that you would be doing in the real world, whether that be something like a trades job where you're using your hands a lot and using tools and it's very applicable in that way, or if it's in like a business sense where you need to present to a group of people or use your communication skills and you're practicing in that way. I think all those things are going to be now available where um, you can go and learn from an expert and do it that way. Or there's going to just be the virtual reality course where you go in and maybe there isn't an expert to walk you through. But like lots of people that just watch YouTube videos or just dive into something today, you can dive into the virtual reality environment and learn these skills on your own. There is a huge shift which is happening. I mean, you know, things are extremely fragmented at this point in time. And uh, there is not much clarity because there is some great innovation which is happening. There is online schools uh, which are doing really cool things. In fact, my son, who is six years old, he was in a traditional brick and mortar school, but we moved on to an online school. And then we realized that the benefits uh, is humongous, uh, you know, from move, like financially plus what uh, the, the curriculum itself. Now, virtual reality, we are just understanding the language because there is so much, there are so many barriers at this point in time, even now, you know, right from your headsets to the accessibility of the headsets, the price points, the technology, 5G for and stuff like that. Today, we still have issues with a 2D platform. COVID thrusted us into this digital world. And then we saw this huge digital divide, you know, the have not, haves and the have nots, because there is still a certain population who don't have basic internet connection and, uh, you know, your devices through which you can uh, access education. If you had to predict a roadmap of what the future of education is going to look like, where, where, where do you think the education is going to look like in another four or five years? You're definitely right. There's that that huge divide of haves and have nots, and I think I think that's a big area where virtual reality can can step in and help. Because um, right now, a lot of the a lot of education, especially here in North America, in the university system, or, or in Canada, we have universities and colleges, and universities are more your 
you're learning from books and colleges is more you're learning the skills hands on and you're you're actually putting those skills to practice while in school. Um, and I, th- I think it's very difficult if you don't have a lot of money and uh, you don't maybe quite know where you want to go in life to pay lots of money to go to a university and just read a bunch of books and go through that process um, versus in the future with virtual reality saying, here's a micro credential. You go through this, uh, this virtual reality course and you're going to have this credential to, to do X, Y, or Z uh, skill. And there are companies hiring for X, Y, and Z skill, but even better, hopefully allows companies that are looking for X, Y, and Z skill to say, Hey, we'll sponsor you with a VR headset that has this course on it. And it's very affordable for the company to pay for. And then, now they're getting employees that are fully trained in that area. Um, I think we're going to see a lot bigger connection there between education and industry. Right. Yeah. I think an alliance is needed of sorts because, you know, the industry and academia alliance is, is, is missing, at least here in India, you know, because of the students, of the people who are there, their grudge is that once they graduate out of school, they, they are left in, in like a no man's land, you know, they, they are left on their own. There should be a, a, a platform which handholds the student uh, lifelong there are people i think lambda uh, from us is doing an extremely interesting model they are not charging the students it's a school to learn to code and they also place you in companies and only after you hit a certain pay structure they take a percentage overall technology is going to play a huge huge role Talk to us about expert VR. Who who are your clients, universities, schools? Yeah, we're we're mostly working with uh, academic institutions. Our our goal over the next five years is to help a million people learn from actions instead of statements. So learning from actually doing and putting to practice the skills that they're learning um, through virtual reality. Um, so we're working a lot with academic institutions. Um, so like I said, I think academic institutions are going to continue to thrive in the future, but it's there's going to be lesser of them and there's going to there's going to be ones that are adopting technology of today that are going to attract the the expertise to build out these courses um, and this new type of content. And they're going to be seen as the the leaders of tomorrow, even if they're not huge schools today. Um, so we're working with those schools to create these, this cutting edge content that can educate um, educate students at their school, but looking at how maybe we can expand that as well to educate um, people that aren't students from their school or people from around the world um, that want those specific skills. So our, our main clients right now, um, Conestoga College is one of the, the biggest colleges that we work with and we're creating all kinds of interesting courses with them. And we're doing, like I said, lots of emergency services like police and firefighting courses, but we're also looking at other like soft skills and counseling or other areas where we can uh, give people the the practice that they need before they go into not just dangerous uh, situations, but also situations that are very difficult to navigate, like if you're a counselor or, or in those types of situations. Well, what's the payment structure and, you know, and what's the partnership structure with your schools and universities? Are you open to working with uh, universities out of Canada? I mean, here in India? We're open to working with anyone, anywhere. We one of our employees is in India right now where we've worked with employees all over and we've started working with companies outside of Canada and outside of North America. Um, so definitely open to, to working with institutions or companies really anywhere in the world. Um, and for, for our payment structure, it, we're pretty flexible. We, we like to be um, very partner focused, not just client focused. So when we're working with an institution or with a company, we're not just, you're not just a client that we're sitting down and we're charging you a percentage. You're a partner that we're working alongside to, to reach similar goals. What we're looking to do over the next year or well, the next six months we're building out and then into the future 
is partner with these schools and build out products. Um, so instead of charging them, uh, I don't know, around a hundred thousand dollars Canadian for one of these environments, we can say, let's partner, let's build a simulation together and maybe get grant funding together or just us get grant funding and we'll build out a police training simulation. And now we can charge a licensing fee or a subscription fee where we're charging a hundred dollars or $200 uh, per student to go through the simulation. So then it's basically replacing a textbook or replacing other learning materials that a student would regularly have to pay for. And then it becomes a lot more uh, cost effective for the schools. What's the course content curriculum that you have built so far and how do you work? Do you provide the hardware also? Uh, and do talk about what do you mean by product? Yeah, so we're, we've worked in all kinds of different uh, course material, like I said, from emergency services to trades to soft skills and business or counseling um, in all kinds of different areas. Um, but the, the first area that we're working in right now is police training. So we're building out uh, our first set of three modules is going to be our product. So basically um, what it will be in the end is a school will have VR headsets and we have, we have the ability to provide some of those. We have the ability to resell some of those or point you in the right direction. We kind of have connections to every VR headset manufacturer out there. Some schools we're talking to, they make the student buy the headset because they're like, we're not using textbooks anymore. So you're going to save a thousand two thousand dollars a year so instead here buy a five hundred dollar headset um so you're saving that cost and then we would charge or, or they provide the headset um and then we would charge 99 dollars or 200 dollars. we're still working on the exact pricing um and with that you would get access for for this first product three modules for police training so you'll learn how to investigate a crime scene you'll learn how to organize and investigate a traffic collision. So whether we have different scenarios, but a highway collision and um, pulling up to the scene there, how do you investigate that? How do you find um, what what caused the collision? And then third, um, how do you deal with a difficult conversation? Um, and how do you get in between people that are fighting or how do you talk them down from a uh, difficult uh, difficult conversation that they're having if they're thinking about committing suicide or things along those lines. Um, so that those are like three modules and they'll be bundled into one set and we'll look to build out more in the future, but that will be the product that they'll pay for. And then we'll look at other industries. Right. This content that you're building, you're saying, is it on, uh, only virtual reality or is it also augmented reality? Good question. Yeah. It's no augmented reality. We're, we, we've done some augmented reality in the past, um, but it's not an area that we've uh, really specialized in. So we have some partners that we work with if, we're doing, if anybody asks for AR work. Um, but with that said, we're also building for PC at the moment. We understand that virtual reality headsets aren't as accessible as they need to be yet. Um, so we also build it for PC so that Hopefully a school can get you into virtual reality by coming to their lab or sending them a headset. Um, but if they don't have that, you can download a file or go on to a website on your laptop and play through the virtual reality or through the virtual experience um, on your laptop. The reason I asked, obviously, because, I mean, we already have 2 billion plus uh, you know, devices in our hand, which is, you know, which lets you experience augmented reality, you know, so, and that's, that's where, where the demand is, you know, because people are looking for content, people are looking for experiences and, and because of the COVID, you know, everybody is holding on to their purse, but I, I'm sure that, you know, things are going to completely change once uh, universities and schools get to know the value that virtual reality learning will add in, in uh, the education. You know, there is a huge, huge, huge hype around metaverse. You know, just recently, uh, Mark Zuckerberg mentioned that uh, he wants to be a metaverse company from being a social media company. So for the, you know, the people who don't really know what metaverse is, would you like to explain what metaverse is, how it's going to transform us and how do you think it's going to be leveraged in education? We're almost already in Metaverse 1.0, which is just the internet. We're so interconnected. You can 
jump from one site to another. All the diff- all the sites are owned by different people, so no one owns the metaverse as a whole. Um, we can jump onto Zoom calls and, and audio and share all kinds of different uh, types of content. So I would say we're almost in that metaverse 1.0. And then what most people are talking about would be kind of metaverse 2.0, at least in my head. Um, and what that is, is now creating that, that 3D environment. So being able to have um, a digital persona, which is your your avatar, but also your profile and all the information that you want attached to yourself, uh, attached to yourself, and then you go from one three D world to another. So you're um, going shopping with friends in this fully digital mall, and you're walking up and down the the different aisles and and shopping for whatever you want to shop for, and then you click a button or you you do some kind of hand motion and a portal appears in front of you and you walk through that portal and now you're in class and you're um, learning some new skill. And then you finish class, you open another portal and you're at a bar with some friends and then you want to go home and, or well, you want to go hang out and watch a movie with your significant other, you open another portal uh, and you walk through that and now you're in this, gigantic movie theater that would almost never be possible that's floating um, around the moon kind of thing or on the moon um, and you're watching in that way. So all those 3D experiences that are, most of them are already created today and we're just going to continue to get better, but interconnecting those so that you can travel throughout them as the same person and not having to click out like you do now to like some UI and have to go through all the apps that you have and um, it's not all, not all interconnected. You don't have the same avatar. You don't have um, the same information. Um, and then at the same time, I guess, being able to control that information. So if you go to one experience and you want to look professional and you're at work in the, in the metaverse and you're at the office doing a board meeting, I know we do our... Um, meetings every Monday morning in rec room and, and get together there and, uh, and uh, have our meeting, but then go play paintball afterwards. Uh, you might want to be in a suit in that environment, but then when you teleport and go through the portal to, uh, to a different environment, now you change into an ogre or something or whatever kind of avatar you want. Um, that's kind of how I picture the, the metaverse sites. There is Facebook, which is working on Horizon. There is Epic working on Fortnite, Roblox, NVIDIA, which is working on Omniverse, they're building Digital Twin, which is going to be a one-to-one digital world of the physical world. Uh, and, and there are various startups around the world, you know, who are, you know, building these small, small pieces. I just hope that the internet, which was a uh, supposed to be or designed to be a platform for everyone it is become a walled garden now and it's got gatekeepers. I hope that with technologies such as blockchain and AI, this new web, spatial web or metaverse that we are building it is a decentralized and beneficial for all. And I hope that, you know, people from all around the world build a larger community and understand the importance of metaverse because in the in this decade itself with technology such as artificial intelligence autonomous vehicle autonomous vehicles with the cars all with uh, the lidars and cameras and 360 cams all around it it's it's going to be capturing every little thing now not everything is good about the metaverse you know because there is going to be the the the, the like pros and cons so uh, uh, we should create a community and you know not just have corporates build this because otherwise it will be again nothing but you know like a, a, a walled garden nfts again it's something that you are uh, really excited about and it's it, it's exciting. It's weird. It's scary. I mean, so w- would you like to describe a, a, a NFT and how it's going to impact uh, everyone? First, I just want to say, yeah, I completely agree with you that um, hopefully, and I don't know, 
the ideal and what the metaverse should be is that decentralized and no one has like walled gardens. No one's a gatekeeper and in control of it and everyone can benefit from it. So yeah, I just wanted to say, I completely agree with that statement and, and hope, um, I guess talking about NFTs that like the blockchain and, and what is being created there can have, um, allow that, uh, in the metaverse. Um, but yeah, talking about NFTs, an area that I've, been interested in for about eight months or so now I, I got into blockchain and cryptocurrency back in 2017 a little bit um not very much i'm not a not an expert but got interested in it and have been kind of following it since then um and especially over the past year um and got interested in in nfts and i think nfts is interesting because there's a lot of um, applicability to the metaverse, but also a lot of applicability to the real world, even though it's all <clears throat> all digital. Um, and so, to explain NFTs, I think it there's there's kind of two types of NFTs. Almost there's utility NFTs and art NFTs. Um, and so, NFT non fungible tokens. So you can't fake um, that token or, or what that is. Um, so. On one side, there's there's the art piece, um, which I think has is a little interesting, um, but it's going to be very hard to to compete in now and especially into the future. Um, and with that, basically, you're just creating creating art, and when you make that into an NFT, you're saying now people own that art and they own the some sort of rights to that art so that they can uh, they can resell it or use it in um, uh, for license it for different things. Um, on the utility side, the area I'm a lot more interested in, and especially for the metaverse, um, it's basically like you're creating that art and maybe creating that 3D asset that people can own, but then there's so many other um, aspects of it that you can then that you can build off. I think Gary Vaynerchuk has done a very good job of showing what that can be with his, his V friends project, uh, as well as I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but he just launched another restaurant project. And, and basically with this, that you own the NFT, you own the art, but then that art also gives you access. So for the V friends project, um, owning that, it allows you to go to, um, VCon for the next three years, which is his conference. That's going to be coming up next year. Um, with the restaurant project, it allows you to go to the restaurant without owning the NFT. You can't go to his restaurant that will be opening up. Um, so interesting how it has that access, but then it can also have other access that you might not know about when you buy the NFT. So, because he knows or whoever sells them, whether it's your favorite artist or an athlete or um, just a business personality that you want to get in touch with, you own that. And now they can send you surprises like here's here's a gift or, hey, you own this NFT. Now you're invited into this special discord where only people that own this NFT are and you can network with people in there. So there's so many different utilities that and so many um exclusive things that can come from owning that NFT. Um, and then I guess to connect it back to the metaverse, there's a lot of interest there because you're it's a digital asset that now you can bring into the metaverse. So if it's a 3D model, that can maybe be a 3D model of an article of clothing that you can wear or use inside of the metaverse that gives you certain abilities um, or that gives you access to certain uh, environments in the metaverse. Um, yeah, it's really NFTs, uh, still an area that I would say I'm not an expert in, but there's just so many possibilities of what could be. Super exciting space that we are getting into. For those education institutes, the traditional brick and mortar institutes who are playing a waiting, wait and watch game and not leveraging technology, you know, such as uh, AR, VR or artificial intelligence, what would be, what would be your pitch to them? There's definitely people at each academic institution that are interested in in these technologies. So find the people at your institution that are interested in these technologies. And even if you don't have the resources right now, give them a little bit of time uh, out of their schedule that they can use to spend on, on researching and seeing how um, 
this technology can affect your institution and really listen to them when they come back with their findings. Because if you find people at your institution that are interested in this technology, they're going to be passionate about researching this and seeing how they can impact uh, your institution and the job that they work for. So they're going to come back with some some really great insights and and there's so many ways that this technology can be used at a very low cost all the way up to millions of dollars. So there's a lot of resources that you can play with depending on which route you want to go. Um, but research has shown that it's it has an impact on the e-learning space for the virtual reality. It's four time, people are four times more focused. They learn four times faster. They retain information for uh, so much more uh, for a year longer, years longer than than they normally would. They're more empathetic to the uh, the e learning experience that they're going through. So there's the research is there to show that type of impact. And on the other technology side, uh, there's just so many new ideas coming out. Uh, whether it be in in parts of Africa, they're now introducing uh, cryptocurrency smart contracts so that you get your degree. Um, on the currency and you have a smart contract that says, I have this degree, it's not just a piece of paper. And that way, when they go to a job, it's uh, irrefutable that uh, they actually got that degree. Um, so there's so many different ways that you can do this. So finding that person on campus that is interested and can help you um, make that impact on your institution because institutions are adopting it today. And if you don't over the next few years, uh, in 20 years, I doubt that the institution will exist because it's just such a big change in how education is done um, that it's it's going to have to be adopted uh, for you to survive as an institution. Thank you, Ivan, for taking time and being part of the podcast. And yes, I, I think that was the ending statement was uh, strong, but I think that's that's the fact. That's the truth. Technology has taken over all parts of our lives. And the legacy traditional businesses need to understand the potential of, of these technologies and, and, and the transformation that these tools can bring in, into our lives, you know, and, and, and our different uh, sectors. You know, education uh, is, is something which is, at least here in India, we, we still are uh, not 100% literate uh, as a nation. And uh, there, there is a digital divide. And I hope that, you know, with tools like virtual reality, blockchain, artificial intelligence, I hope it will democratize uh, education and, and make it accessible for everyone. Because if we have people, I mean, educated citizens, we will have a great nation. And thank you, Ivan. Really appreciate you taking time. Wish you and the team the very best. And to my listeners, if you like what you see in here, then please press the subscribe button. And until next time, see you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Eddie.